Coming up on Mountain News this morning, survivors of the historic flooding that devastated parts of our region continue to share their stories with us. And one of those stories is told by an Eastern Kentucky fire chief who says he is blessed to be alive. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you, 533, and it is Monday. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. I feel like the weekend just flew by. And let's head over to Brandon Robinson for a look at our forecast. Brandon, I know that you had an eventful weekend. I know you helped volunteer over in Neon, correct? Mm, close to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's so just so heartwarming to see on Facebook so many people volunteering. Mm -hmm. I know there's a close group of people here in Hazard that I know, and that's all they've done is they have just volunteered over and over again. And I just I just think it's very, very heartwarming. Yeah, so. and it's, I tell you, the devastation out there, mm -hmm. especially in parts of Letcher County, and I'm not, I've not really been anywhere right. else, but uh, we went through Neon for the first time yesterday, and that town, Oh yeah, awful, oh, awful situation. Yeah, sure. Seeing it in person is a lot different than seeing the video of it. So, I think yeah. that's everywhere. Yeah, You know, exactly. we show video, but then like, if you're out there covering it, you kind of sit back in your car and you're like, what did I just witness? Yeah, and I was yeah. actually, we came around the back way through uh, Dean and Colson, mm -hmm. And there was a whole house, probably a mile from mine, maybe two miles from my house, that was just wiped out completely off the foundation, gone. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a big weekend out there for a lot of folks, and cleanup continues. Hopefully, you get some breaks today. Let's take a look at the satellite radar for the last six hours. Had some rain last night, but it started to drift out there a little bit this morning. Some fog is still out there, though. Anywhere that has less than five miles of visibility on this map is pretty rough out there. Logan, Pikeville, Jackson, Hazard, Harlan, Williamsburg, Somerset, Middlesboro, and Jacksboro now under that criteria. So again, continue to be careful. London, not too much going on down there right now. Kind of dark as the cars go by on the interstate slowly. Temperatures out there from 64 in Wise to 70 in Prestonsburg, Harlan, Somerset, and Jonesville, and Middlesboro this morning. Across the state and region, 76 Paducah and Louisville, 69 across the river in Cincinnati, 68 the Tri-Cities, and 72 in Nashville. Your 12-hour planner for today, up to about 87 this afternoon. Scattered chances for rain will come into play as we head deeper today, but I think it's mainly a mix of sun and clouds once the clouds start to drift in. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you all. It's another heartbreak over in Knott County. An athlete at Knott County Central High School has died just days after helping flood victims in the community. Perry County Sheriff Joe Ingalls says Aaron Crawford, a football player and wrestler for the Patriots, was helping flood victims Wednesday evening when he started to feel unwell. He was taken to UK Hospital in Lexington where he later died. While the official cause of his death has not been released, Sheriff Ingalls says Aaron loved superheroes and he was a real life superhero. A police escort is expected to start at County Line Church near the Breathitt Perry County Line at around 10 o'clock this morning. As Aaron's body is brought back to Eastern Kentucky, funeral arrangements have not yet been released. Kentucky State Police has released information about two missing people from Breathitt County. Investigators say they're still looking for 60 year old Vanessa Baker and 29 year old Nancy Cundiff. Uh, they are both from Lower River Caney Road in the Lost Creek community. They haven't been seen since the floods. If you have any information, you're asked to call KSP Post 13 here in Hazard. People in Eastern Kentucky still have a long way to go before their cleaning, rebuilding, and recovery are complete. But some hope that President Joe Biden's visit today will bring some much-needed hope to the area. Julia Sandor talked with some flood victims who say they could really use a boost in morale. It's been a long couple of weeks for the people in Eastern Kentucky. Iris and Chris are just two of the people in their neighborhood who are dealing with the cleanup. Hopefully, maybe get this cleaned up good down here and just have a little work done on it and stay here. This is, you know, I've lived here a long time. They say this is their home, but the damage and mold is making it hard for them to stay. And their neighbor, Alan Shaw, says he's just thankful for all the people coming to help. Every day we've been working as a team, you know, and trying to do everything we can do, you know, and, you know, I, I say thank you to, all, you know, these Red Cross workers and these churches coming down here you know, bringing us cleaning supplies and stuff like that, because if I didn't have none of that, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. He says with both the governor and president coming to tour more of the damaged areas, it will bring the community hope. And people in Breathitt County say even though there is still a lot of work to do, 
they're lucky to have so much support. Yeah, they helped out. Uh, People's been wonderful. Yeah, they have. To, but, to do uh, what they've done. You know. Uh, That's the way it should be. But everybody has to clean up, so it's a process and it's a nasty one. It's going to take time. In Breathitt County, Julia Sandor, WKYT. Following the flood that devastated the region, many people who were impacted are stepping forward to share their stories, including one family from the Chinese area of Perry County. The home of Henry Johnson, his girlfriend Jennifer Ritchie, and Jennifer's mom Mary Combs was almost submerged in flood water early Thursday morning. While waiting for help, Johnson and Ritchie climbed to the roof of their trailer while Combs was trapped inside, breathing through a crack in the back door. You know, for the four hours that we sat there, I just didn't know until rescue was able to get to us and they're like, is anybody inside? And I was like, my mom. And when I heard her talking, that was the happiest I've ever been. I was so happy. And not only that, she, not only did she try to save her own life, but she, she tried to save as many of our animals as she possibly could. Although the three of them lost their home and a few of their pets, Richie says she feels grateful to still have her boyfriend and her mom. When the flood water was rising quickly, 77-year-old Ruth Price had just minutes to find safety as she was in danger of drowning. Well, our Chandler Wilcox talked with her about her terrifying experience. Ruth Price was sound asleep in her apartment when she saw a rush of water start to creep through her house. Before she knew it, the water was three feet high and Ruth fought to get out. You can see, uh, yeah, I waited when, when I got out of here, when I saw that it was coming through the door, and I thought, uh-oh, this is not normal. Ruth tried to recover whatever she could before running upstairs, but the water was rising too fast for her to feel safe. I waited up to my waist, trying to see if there was anything I needed to get. But when you're tore up like that, you look, and you don't know what to get. The flood water ruined a lot of Ruth's furniture and collections. Oh, Lord. I had stuff, this was stored, everything we had stored in here, um, but nothing, like I said, I didn't try to get anything. Bruce says even though she lost a lot of valuables, she is just glad to be alive. And Blackie Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Ruth said she is living with her daughter right now as people help clean out her apartment. Well, bouncing around like an air hockey puck, that is how Letcher County Volunteer Fire Department Chief Wallace Bowling Jr. described his experience in the flood. Chief Bowling had left uh, his home to check on his fire station, which he heard was flooding and ended up being trapped. The water pushed his truck down the street before he hit a tanker truck. He then shot out the passenger window and climbed to the top where he stayed for 15 hours. He says he is blessed to be alive. And I was thankful to make it to where I did because when, you know, we left from up there and I, we're probably looking at 200 foot. I've been in the water, you know, getting slung around. Chief Boeing says the fire station itself was destroyed. The flood destroyed many churches across the region, taking away the place where a lot of people gather to find peace. On Sunday, church groups that suffered destruction from the flood met in unusual places to find ways to recover together. Cornerstone Church in Whitesburg met outside of its building under a tent. Pastor Frank Holbrook says the flood was the worst he has seen. We've had a little water on the property from the river, never remotely to get in the building, and then at this time you have over five feet. Cajun Navy has a tent set up outside of the Cornerstone Church when anyone needing supplies can get them. Well, just ahead this morning, some jewelry from the late and great king of rock and roll soon heads to the auction block. We'll have those details in just a few minutes. A slow moving cold front can potentially bring us some more issues as we had deeper in this week. We're keeping a close eye. I'll have the latest in about three minutes.